Well, thank you, Stephen, and thanks everybody for coming out here. We're thrilled and excited to have the Tech Field Day crew back here at Nimble Storage. You know, like Stephen said, we were looking back on this recently, launching Nimble a little bit over three years ago that day in Seattle, and it's been fun to use this occasion to look back and see some of the accomplishments that we've had over that period of time. And, you know, we've been fortunate to experience, you know, great growth of, within our organization. I, I can remember in those days in 2010, people still not sure if, you know, Flash was really going to have the impact that, that it's had on storage and other things that look really silly now as we look back with the unquestioned uh, change that that's had on the industry. And what we wanted to do today is not spend a lot of time on the general nimble pitch and give you guys a lot of the marketing overview. Most of you, I think, know a lot about nimble and what we do. And for those who don't, we're happy to follow up on some of those details offline. But we wanted to take the opportunity today to, to really give you guys a deep technical dive into a couple of areas that are really critical for, for Nimble Storage. And the first is around scaling. And we introduced this idea last year, something that we call scale to fit. And Umesh is gonna describe this in a moment in more detail. But an element within that scaling strategy that allows us to flexibly essentially add performance or capacity to our solutions at the lowest incremental cost and without any interruption or downtime uh, has been uh, very well received in the market and very widely adopted since we really launched that architecture of the market last year. But there's an area that we're particularly proud of there and it's one of the most complex engineering projects I think that we've undertaken since kind of launching version 1.0 and that's scale out. And it's an area that lots of people are talking about but I think there's a lot of confusion about what does scale out really mean? What does it do for me? Uh, and, and so we wanted to really go through and give you a deep technical overview with Umesh Maheshwari to my left here, our founder and CTO, who's gonna help you understand the philosophy, what we built, why we did it. And then we're gonna go into a demonstration of that. Mike McLaughlin, who heads up our technical marketing team, is gonna give you guys some real world insight. We'll go back and forth a little bit there to show some of the things that scale out can really deliver on in the real world. And then in the second half, we're gonna focus on something that we call InfoSight. We gave some of you last year an early preview to some of our thinking off camera before we had actually launched it. And this is another, we think really game-changing solution for Nimble Storage. It has really fundamentally transformed the way we think about supporting our customers and the whole relationship we have with them. And we've got a ton of really cool information about what InfoSight is, how it works, and what it's meant for our customers. And I'm also really happy that we've got our chief data scientist, Larry Lancaster, who's gonna join our VP of support, Rod Bag, in really showing how we've taken this idea of data sciences and deep data analytics and started to apply it to how we think about supporting our customers but it's gone beyond that. As you'll hear, we've done things that actually allow us to take that information and change the way we actually engineer our products, the way we build in new features. And I think it's looking back, you know, five and 10 years from now, there's hardly gonna be a company that isn't thinking about an approach similar to that in launching new products to the market. It's changed the way we go to the market that fundamentally. So with that, I'm going to get out of the way and let the guys really get into the technology. And again, we'll start with Umesh to take us through our scale to fit and scale out solution. Yep. Okay. So first, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's great to be able to present to all of you here. So thanks for visiting. As, as Dan said, uh, we have made a lot of good progress on scaling. So we are going to share some of that. Uh, one way to look at what we have done is that we already had a very strong foundation for a, for a base system that provides a lot of capacity, performance, and data protection, and, and does this efficiently. So what we have done now is you know, taken that foundation and made it scale. I'm going to talk about the, the theory of operations behind scalability, and Mark is, is going to uh, give us a demo. Okay, let's see if it is on. All right. Okay, 
So as most of you know, there are two main methods for scaling computer systems. There is scale up, which uh, generally refers to adding hardware to an existing system, uh, beefing it up, so to speak. And there is scale out, which is you know, taking multiple nodes that, can, that could function independently and making them work like a single system. So scale up, in general, um, scales a specific dimension at a time. So in the context of storage, um, it's mostly scaling up the storage capacity. That's what most vendors provide when they talk about scaling up. But you could think of scaling other dimensions. For example, uh, one could scale the cache uh, uh, by either adding more flash SSDs to the system or replacing SSDs with, with larger SSDs. Uh, or you could scale the amount of processing power in the system by uh, replacing controllers with uh, more powerful controllers, with, with more CPU cores and memory. Okay. And, and in fact, uh, at Nimble, we uh, support all of these three dimensions of scaling. And we do that in a way that is non-destructive, so the data services don't need to be brought down. On the other hand, scale out scales all the dimensions, and it does that uniformly. Each has its advantages. So because scale up can scale just what is needed, if only one dimension needs to be scaled up, it can be more economical. It's also more simple. You know, for example, um, to scale up storage capacity, you just plug in a shelf, and you're, you're all set. Scale out uh, can also be made simple, but it's not as, as plug and play as scale up. So it's, scale out is a, is a little bit more complex to deploy, but it's um, also a lot more complex to engineer. And that's because you are taking systems that could run independently. Each of them has its own um, mind, so to speak. And, and, and you're making it work like one. And in fact, there are many, um, many startups that are dedicated to doing nothing but just focusing on scale out. Uh, and it, it's the problem. Sorry, OK, right. Right, and it, it's uh, a difficult enough problem that many startups uh, die in the process of trying it. Uh, I know because I was one in one of them about 10 years ago. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> okay, but, but it's all, you know, if you can get it to work, then it's all very worth it because it, it has a bunch of advantages over scale up. So with scale up, there is a relatively short limit to how much you can scale. For example, uh, you know, there are only as many CPUs you can add to a shared memory system. Yes, you know, if you um, wanted to would scale further, maybe you would go for a supercomputer kind of architecture. But that is not, um, would not be commodity hardware. It would be very expensive. Whereas with scale out, you can use commodity hardware, just create more nodes, and it scales everything. Right? So that is one. The second... Um, problem with scale up by itself is that once you reach that limit of scaling up, then you are stuck. Well, you're either stuck or you have to do a forklift upgrade. You, know, you move <coughs> your... Which is just another kind of stuck. Which is, <laughs> that's right. Um, that's another kind of stuck. Um, whereas with scale out, you have this nice ability to refresh the system perpetually. You know. Add a new <coughs> model to your cluster, uh, retire an old model, and, and you can keep on doing this. So, so each has its advantages, and uh, we decided that we would like to provide both. The, the good news is that they are not mutually exclusive. In fact, there is a, a multiplier effect here. So, for example, with scale up, we were able to go from four cores to 12 cores within a node. And now with scale out, we are able to go from four nodes, 
two, four nodes within a cluster. So overall, in a cluster, we have increased the number of cores 12 folds compared to our lowest model. Okay, did you say that you can scale out to four nodes? Yes. So that uh, is how we are starting. Okay. The, the design is, is uh, something that should um, allow us to scale to tens of nodes and possibly hundreds of nodes. And, and a node is a dual controller system. That's right. A node is a storage array that can function independently and is highly available by itself. So right. has no single point of failure. So you're, so you're not achieving the high availability via scale out. That's right. So did you say you scale out to four nodes or you scale up with four nodes in a single like stack? No, so scale up um, the way we have defined it would uh, be. So yeah, but how far up do you go? So up is basically replacing controllers with higher end controllers that have more CPU cores. So our lower end controller, for example, has four CPU cores. And the higher end today has 12 CPU cores. So that's a factor of 3x increase. And we are looking <laughs> to go further uh, to, to, uh, to more, even more cores. That's going to match the question of how many shells, right? Which you can. Ah, so there is, yes, I was talking about uh, scaling up uh, yeah, compute, you... but we can also scale up the number of shells. Uh, the box by itself uh, includes uh, a shelf of drives. Right. And then we can add three more to that. Okay. And then you can scale out to four nodes. We can scale out to four such independent nodes. So basically you can end up with a maximum of 16 sh disk shelves That's right. in a cluster. That is okay. right. Okay. So, so scale up uh, is, is something that we actually talked about last year when <coughs> some of you were here. And we even gave a demo uh, of how we could increase the you know, plug in a shelf, add more flash, uh, or uh, move to a higher end controller, all non disruptively. What I'm going to do today is focus on the new thing that we have added, which is scale out. So, uh, as I said earlier, the main challenge with scale out is to take multiple nodes and make them work like one system. And, and the node here is a storage array with dual controllers, uh, one or more shelves. Uh, and, and making it work like one system uh, has um, you know, multiple uh, goals here. So should be like one system uh, for administration, should be like one system as far as the storage capacity is concerned and also like one system as far as performance is concerned. So, so that's a major goal. Another goal is to support the perpetual refresh that I was talking about. The ability to um, non-disruptively add a node or a storage array uh, into the mix and also to be able to remove one. So in, in making multiple arrays work like one system, we thought it would be useful to provide the users with separate control over clustering for administration and clustering for data storage. And by administration, we mean both monitoring and uh, management here. So making changes for configuration or provision of data. So, so we have two abstractions. Uh, the user can group a bunch of arrays for administration purposes. And the group would share uh, networking, would share a set of virtual IPs for management and for vSERV iSCSI, so for iSCSI uh, discovery and target. A and then the user can partition the group into pools where each pool has one or more arrays. So the idea here is that a pool is a storage container. So a volume resides within a pool. And the user might create a pool out of a single array 
if they do not want to share its capacity and performance uh, and you know, maybe the software version with, with other arrays. Or they might choose to consolidate the resources and create a pool with multiple arrays. 